Guys, we're friends, right? Well, the sign of a true friend is when they discover something good, they share it with you. And that's what I'm gonna do today. This is Loretta's British Ginger Tea. It is amazing. It's got 100% ginger, cinnamon, elderberry, and manuka honey. Gotta admit, don't know what manuka honey is, not even sure what it does for you, but it just sounds healthy, so I need some. This tea is fantastic for boosting your immune system, helps you feel good, and you'll live out loud like our beautiful British friend, Loretta Nequatcha. Please hit her up on Instagram, order some of this tea, and she is at farmer's markets and pop-up shops everywhere. You gotta get some of this stuff. Not only is it good for you, but it, Tastes great. Loretta's British Ginger Tea. I got some, you need it too. Go and order now. Hi, this is Melba Moore, and you're watching Rude Rangers TV. You listen to Rudy Radio, powered by Rude Rangers Entertainment. I am Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema Organization, and this is Talk with Tara, a show that highlights fantastic filmmakers, artists, and entrepreneurs, entertainers from all walks of life. We're committed to introducing you to individuals, organizations, and projects of which you're not necessarily aware, and we do this with the intention of uplifting, empowering, and enlightening you. Today, if you can, please share this episode on all your social media. And we also love it if you text your friends and ask them to tune in. I am so pleased to have this wonderful, amazing woman on my show. <laughs> She is fabulous. She put the F in fabulous. Wow. And threw her hair wide. <laughs> you know, audience, you have to welcome uh, this multi-talented woman. Her name is Mariska. Mariska, hello and welcome. So happy to have you. <laughs> How are you doing? Miss <laughs> Tara Renee, thank you so much for your invitation. I'm doing great. I'm uh on the heels of um, a premiere of a new production. So I'm just, you know, the gold dust is settling down and <laughs> I'm getting my, my land legs back. <laughs> and it was an amazing production. You know, we're going to talk about this, let the audience know all about it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So timely, so on point, honest. It was coming from a very true place. Yes, and, that's, uh, what, that's how I like to approach the work. You yes. got to tell the truth. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's so needed, especially in these times. I mean, we have four years of constant misstatements uh, and falsehoods and all of that. And it's time that, you know, we can start gravitating to a very good source of truth. And truth is certainly a, a good source. But before I go uh, down the street, around the corner and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the next state. I want to just enlighten the audience on who you are. And uh, I want to talk to them first about your filmmaking and what drew you into filmmaking. Well, you know, I come from a theater background. However, when I moved to LA, I had the pleasure of working on the last two seasons of A Different World. Oh. Now, watching Debbie Allen run that soundstage, I mean, I was like, boy, I'd love to do that one day. So I just took the initiative while I was doing my work on A Different World. I signed up at LACC and took a director's course. I didn't, I didn't even know when or how I would use it, but I knew I wanted that skill set. Mm -hmm. So I went through the program, I got my certificate in television directing, and I went on about my life as a performer. You want to fast forward to when I began acting, being an acting coach. 
in 2006. Mm. I'm in my 15th year now as an acting coach. Wow. So I started, yeah, right? It's a milestone and I'm very, very proud of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I'm a professor now too at um, Purchase College. Woo! That's wow. crazy. I didn't, I didn't see that coming. It's just like <laughs> the opportunity was just hit me. But anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> so as an acting coach, my students started asking me to direct things, uh, started with theater. And then my first film is the one you saw called Love Always Eartha that you put Woo! Your film festival. That was my very first film. What? You are an amazing talent because that film, I mean, it rocked all of our worlds. I'm telling you. I mean, you. you know, I didn't know that it was going to be so good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. you know it was it was it my was. first project and i knew deirdre and i we had a vision we wanted to be you know because in 1955 you mm -hmm. have to make sure that the the world yep. that, that's in the frame is pristine mm -hmm. so even an exit sign at the theater we were like no 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 no, no. can we take that exit sign please down we'll put it back we'll put it back <laughs> you know it was just like little things like that so what mm -hmm. drew me to um Filmmaking was, first of all, telling stories. Mm -hmm. um, the iconic Eartha Kitt, I said, I couldn't say no to that because she influenced <laughs> my life as a young woman, black woman performer. Um, seeing her come back to Broadway um, in Timbuktu, you know, I was a little, little mm -hmm. girl, but I remember just watching her and I was like, she got this long applause and she was just standing there. <laughs> and I was, I said to my mother, I was like, she didn't do anything. And my mother, Elfo, <laughs> oh, oh. so, and there was this thunderous. And um, mm. so I knew I wanted to tell her story. Now, what's important to me about filmmaking is that you get to share worlds and cultures and insights to people that may not usually have privy to that information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to share stories and to introduce culture and worlds and insights and maybe touch the, the consciousness of the recipient and maybe change a perspective and help them lose a judgment or, you know, find empathy for the characters that we're following. That's what drew me to filmmaking. That's awesome. And, you know, um, I love what you said, you know, it, it allows you to tell all kinds of stories. And, and, and film is a very powerful medium mm -hmm. because it has the power to stimulate imagination mm -hmm. in, in the minds that watch it. Mm -hmm. And you can literally transport that person to where you're taking them through this medium. On the ride. And yeah, yeah. And so I can totally understand you know, when you need to remove certain things like the exit sign, you know, because you're literally taking people where to 1955 exactly, and, exactly. and we can't be looking like 2010. <laughs> <laughs> you know, remind me, of, <laughs> it remind me of uh, Tyler Perry had reenacted a scene in the color purple. It was the uh, the scene where the the sisters were young. Uh, Celie Ce and her sister were young in the cornfields. And this so now it was past that point, but he reenacted his own version. So now he's dressed up as Sophia with the hat, the, the dress. That. Yes, it's a, well, he, it was a clip. It might be on YouTube, but it was a clip where he dressed up as Sophia. He had the outfit on and he is telling, well, Medea as Sophia is telling someone off. Oh my right? goodness. So you have the feeling that, okay, this is 1920, but then when you look at Medea's face, she has on a pair of gazelles. <laughs> the glasses, <laughs> the glasses were from like the 1980s. <laughs> oh he did that on purpose? Yes, I believe so. Oh. <laughs> When I saw that, I could not stop laughing. It was 
hilarious. That Just one little up. thing like that. Yes. Right. Could right, knock right. off the whole era that That's you're projecting. Right. You know. <laughs> That's right. Right. And um, not to go too far off on that, but I heard that Charlton Heston had on his Rolex when he was holding up the Ten Commandments. Oh, really? <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> Moses with a Rolex? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so you know, and in and, and filmmaking, you're absolutely right. These details, while a lot of people may not pay attention to it, but some do, like how we are just pointing out here. Yeah. And it's important to have these elements in place with the story that you were looking to tell. But Mariska, you also did another film. And I now I'm gonna assume that uh, this is your second film that you did. We screened it for the African-American Women in Cinema online media series, Girls' Night Out. Oh, 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 yes, <laughs> yes. Um, um, what happened to Girls' Night? That yeah. was, yeah, that was, that was that, that, what number film was that? Oh, okay. You know, I ha I actually have eight films that I've oh, done. Wow. I've never. I'm working on my. I want to do a feature. They're all, all shorts. I haven't done a feature film yet, but that's one. That's on my list to do. Um, what number was Girls' Night? I think wow, that might be number <laughs> five. Wow! Wow! Well, how yes. did that come about? Because we 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 uh, that was selected to be in our program. And we got a lot of hits on that. But how did that come about? Again, um, my students. Oh, wow. My students, uh, two of them that I knew got together with two other women. And they wanted to tell the story. And they mm -hmm. wrote it all together. They produced it all together. And they hired me to direct it. Wow. You Amazing. know, you know, Amazing. I think... You know, one thing that people need to know is your work ethic will take you a yes. long, long way. And I guess the way they see how I am as an acting coach, that lets them know that I would be a director that they would want to work with. Yes, yes. And that's true. You know, um, I believe it was Maya Angelou who said, you know, folks won't forget how you treat them, you know, and uh, and that's so important. Uh, as, especially in this type of business when you are dealing with so many different types of people and projects and you just never know. But that memory uh, is what folks will carry on, uh, yes. you know, yeah. as they go yeah. forward. So that's good. Congratulations. So now I am curious. You did the filmmaking. You talked about the acting coach theaters where you started out and and, you know, I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit, but I want to talk about this recent piece that you just did, even though we kind of opened up a little bit about it. But okay. please talk about how did you uh, come into that, uh, that particular project? And then where would you like to see it go? You know, because you, you all did a banged up roll out job. I was glued. Wow. I was glued. You because glued. again, yeah, because you know, it, it was it was so honest, you know, and to to have that type of artistry where you really felt the characters, they were relatable, you know? And um so please just tell the audience how did you you come across that and you know what do you, where do you see that going? But before you go into details, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Woman in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Hey, everyone. I'm Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS and the Make the Great Foundation for Education. You're listening to Rudy Radio. We're having a conversation with African-American filmmakers. Join the African-American Women in Cinema Filmmaker Series at the Clubhouse. Presented by I Am the Color of Beautiful Global. Every Monday night 
6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. AAWIC on Clubhouse. Join us on the Clubhouse app for this inspiring conversation. Hosted by Karen Moore, founder of I Am The Color of Beautiful Global. Join us this Monday at 6 p.m. on the Clubhouse app for African American Women in Cinema's Filmmaker Series. Hi, I'm Harry O. Confetti, International Formula One driver. I spent to get to Long Island Telecom before they closed. I need to get one of these fantastic deals that Long Island Telecom has, because you can't beat the price anywhere else. Oh, get away from that car, what are you doing? Freaking kids playing with the car out there. Anyway, I'm glad I got here. Wait, what do you mean you're closing? I gotta come back tomorrow? What's your number? 631-833-9679? Oh, stop writing me a ticket. Hey, this is Jewel Taker from the Jewel Taker Show on Impact Network. Also, you can watch me and my family on The Tankers on Prime Amazon or watch me and my sister's Chatter Talk Show on Fox. So me and my girls, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, Monique Eilid Mosley, Real Talk Kim, and Holly Carter. And you're watching Rudy Radio. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I'm Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema. And today we are talking with the powerful, multi talented Mariska. Mariska. Hey. So before we went to break, we were, uh, Mariska was just getting ready to tell us uh, how she came about securing this wonderful project I recently saw and uh, again what drew me to it was the honesty of it and and also Mariska is going to let us know where does she see it going so please Mariska go ahead okay can I ask a quick question um, yes about this piece which segment or story or character really penetrated your heart the most and why you know what I have to say all of them. I love the young lady who was the model at the beginning because it was when she got to the point where, you know, she talked about her relationship with her mother. And that was so real. It was like, mom, how come you didn't prepare me for, you know, the extra that come with the territory, Wow, you know? And because of that, she had these, she acquired indirectly these insecurities that played into, you know, her trying to move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in her chosen profession, which is modeling. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful young lady. You know, could, could rock all kind of covers on magazines. And she did, right? Right. And, 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 and can continue to be, but, but anyway, so it was that and the other, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Joanne. Let me, let me just, let me just say it like this. Okay. Those characters took me places that it was important to go because, you know, it gave such an insight and, uh, I think it even brought another in-depth, uh, opportunity for to look inward you know because mm -hmm. as artists as people in the entertainment industry you know it, it has always been this unspoken rule to focus on your talent until you get the big break and then when you get the big break then you can do whatever you want to do but as i have been speaking with prior guests we've been sharing that it's okay for a season to possibly maybe have tunnel vision, but at some point you got to deal with who you are as a person. Because when you quote unquote, get the big break that you so uh, uh, look look forward to in, drive, in pushing. Yeah, drive right, words. right, right. Um, you show up broken. You show up at the big break broken and then mm. and then 
that's when you hear, you know, little stories. Oh, well, I met such and such and her attitude was just so nasty. Mm. And that could stem from some childhood trauma that was never dealt with. Mm. And now she or he is on this bigger stage with so many things going at them or yeah, uh, coming towards them. And it's not only that singing career or acting career that they put so much energy to it. You're not here to just act. It's other things you're going to have to contend with. Right, right. And, and so, you know, but anyway, I think that your piece allow an individual who want to be uh, open in that way, you know, uh, to bring them to another level of consciousness in dealing with their self as they are pursuing mm. what they feel their God-given talent is. Nice. Wow. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay. So um, first of all, um, I think one person shows are powerful. Um Naima's show, Naima Mora, The Amazing Adventures of a Woman in Need is my third one woman show that I've directed. I did my own wow. at that same theater in, um, in 09. I did my wow. own one woman show and it just broke open and broke loose some chains. And mm. I t it, was, it was autobiographical for me. And mm -hmm. uh, so I found, I, it, gave, it, it encouraged me to say this something in these one person shows. So mm -hmm. I started a whole class for artists who wanted to create their own one person show called the Intimacy Project. So wow. from that, um, I, the first one was um, the Diary of an Afro Goddess. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, yes, she garnished. Oh. Um, an Adelco Award nomination for Best wow. Solo Performer. Then Deidre, we put mm -hmm. together um, her her one woman show about Eartha Kitt called Down to Eartha, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. also garnished her a um, an Adelco Award nomination. Wow! And this is the third Naima Mora with the Amazing Adventures of a Woman in Need. Uh, so the premiere, right? So mm -hmm. I approached Naima. Um, I met her a little over 10 years ago when I was teaching with Susan Batson mm -hmm. and she was just off the heels of winning America's next top model. So she was all the rage mm -hmm. and she thought that she wanted to try her hand at acting. She took a few classes. Then I didn't see her for a nice, like maybe over five years. And then she started taking class again. And one day after mm -hmm. class, I pulled her aside and I said, have you ever, I mean, when I see something, I say something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I said, I think you're really powerful. And I mm -hmm. think that you should consider a one woman show. And she was like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just going to put it right there. And you can think about it. About a week later, she said, yes. Mm -hmm. And that was a year and a half ago. So we just oh, started nice. brainstorming. It took us a year and a half to get to what you saw on Saturday. Wow. We really took our time. Mm -hmm. We developed the characters. I, mm -hmm. I, I was a creative consultant. She wrote it, but like I, mm -hmm. I pushed her. I'd be like, nope, mm -hmm. nope, mm -hmm. nope. You know, mm -hmm. scratch that, that mm -hmm. surface, you know, go back mm -hmm. to the drawing board, think about this, this, this. So I was a creative consultant throughout the thing while we were doing character development exercises and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's, the, the seeds that I, I sewed into her mm -hmm. a year and a mm. half ago. And wow. um, this is, the, this is the, the, the flowers that pushed up through the earth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm, 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 mm. Well, you got me thinking. That's just, I tell you, that's, you, 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 you're, you're phenomenal. But I, I have to share with the audience because uh, the apple don't fall too far from the tree because <laughs> Mariska mother is powerful as well. And I recently okay. saw Mariska, the movie Lean On Me. <laughs> ah, just recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Um, uh, Miss Powers. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Miss Powers rock that role. Got up yeah. there, 
you know, did she ever talk to you about her experience in, in filming Lean On Me? And how was it working with Morgan Freeman? Freeman. Oh, she loved the whole cast. Um, mm -hmm. She loved the, the, the role for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, she shined in that role, very she memorable. Did. People still yes. talk about, oh my God, I love Miss Powers and da da da, -da. Yeah. <laughs> um, You know, it's interesting. I was talking to um, a producer in um, Atlanta talking about maybe spinning off a TV show. Oh. And they were like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe your mom could just like be, do a little cameo. And I was like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. why not? Yeah. So, I mean, she's still, she, she's still, you know, she left such an imprint in that character. Yes, she did. Um, she had a great experience. You know, mm -hmm. she loves kids. She mm -hmm. always loved mm -hmm. kids because, you know, when you say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, when I was mm -hmm. a kid, she had an acting school. Did she? Yeah, called the Winner's Circle. Wow. And uh, so she worked with kids. And of course, me and my brother, we were in the winter circle and neighborhood kids <laughs> and some kids from our high school. And, you know, kind of be like, oh, we want to be in the in the acting school. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it all started. It's, it's, it was all happening, you know. Um, wow. it, it's, it's interesting um, how similar our track her and I mm -hmm. tracks are like parallel mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a way. Wow. That's good. That's good. And, and, you know, to have that type of environment, your giftings can't help, but be fully nourished. So yeah. that way you can express and help those, you know, who you're called out to help. And that's just awesome. Totally awesome. You know, um, I know you shared some, but, uh, if you have a few more, we would love to hear what are some of the highlights in the process of you pursuing uh, either your filmmaking projects, certainly your theater projects uh, that you would like to share, meaning that while you were in pursuit of them in the execution, mm -hmm. were there any moments that uh, that you were just like, wow, either confirm that this is what you're supposed to be doing or a aha moment, you know, some revelatory elements came through in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get a phone call or text or someone who wanted to acknowledge you for mm -hmm. the work that you've been doing? Any of those type of things happen while you were in pursuit of executing your projects? Um, well, you know, when you, it's so interesting, like I work, in so many facets or, or mm -hmm. throngs of the entertainment <laughs> business, right? Yeah. So the first thing that came to mind was, um, you know, as an acting coach, you know, coaching different actors to bring their characters for their film project to life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even right now, I'm coaching um, this actress named Nafisa Williams, who is... Um, playing Robin um, opposite the Whitney Houston in I Want to Dance ah, with Somebody. Yes. Right. Yes. So, and she was also in um, Black Lightning. She was one of the daughters mm -hmm. in Black Lightning. So, you know, when you, you do this work with these actors and then you see the product, mm -hmm. you know, and then they come back, you know, for mm -hmm. the next project and so on and so on. It's very rewarding. Her, mm -hmm. Nicole Bahari, Mm -hmm. um, her work, you know, we're out, we've been working over like 12 years or 13 years wow. together where, when I was working with Tasha Smith, uh -huh. um, you know, just seeing how she's gone on and now she's like mm -hmm. a major director, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, be, being behind the scenes as a filmmaker is very gratifying and rewarding as well. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of, um, like the films that I've produced, uh, directed, um, I love, um, I love casting them. Ah, like I uh -huh. love marrying the right actor to the right mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. I think well, that's we, really I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to, to I didn't re even realize you were talking. I want to hear more of that, but we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to talk with Tara presented by African American woman in cinema right here on Rudy radio.
Talk with Tara. I am Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema, and today we are talking with powerhouse Mariska. Before we went on break, she was telling us about some of these highlight moments in her process, and uh, basically, she got into filmmaking. So, Mariska, please continue. Um, yeah. So, with the projects that I directed, I like. I really love when they let me cast it as well. Mm -hmm. Because I've worked with, I, I mean, countless, countless <laughs> actors. Like somebody told me, you should start a Google Doc. <laughs> and uh, actually Deidre, actually Deidre, oh, uh, my Earth the Kit, my Earth the Kit. She said, start a Google Doc, because she's like, how can you keep up with everyone? I was like, I really can't. Um, but, um, you know, the working with actors, you know, I, I, it's just become such a joy. And then mm. telling stories, important stories. I think mm -hmm. I, my, it's my belief that we as artists are in service mm -hmm. and with our gifts, we are meant to gift the world with messages and stories and lessons that they could take forward. Don't mm -hmm. just splat something up on the screen just because you have a camera. I think that's irresponsible. I think we have a great responsibility as filmmakers to tell, to say something very important. Um, and it's also to entertain, you know? Um, when I like to do character development, I'm like, we're not going for perfection. We can't find ourselves in perfection. It's that's those little right. cracks. It's those little cracks. Mm -hmm. that we seep into and that you yes. seep out of, right? Yes. Um, so, you know, that's that's my approach. I'm in service and I want to do my best and I want to leave a legacy. And every story I tell, it has to be a part of my legacy. Every actor that I work with, they're officially a part of my legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want it to be done in the spirit of excellence. I say, you look, if you're looking mm -hmm. for mediocre, you could just swipe left or whatever that <laughs> is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's why, you know, um, you know, I work hard. Mm -hmm. I don't shy away from it. Mm -hmm. My actors, they work hard and they know um, that they're going to have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, it, and I think it, the work speaks for itself. The work speaks for itself. My, my, my work has grown and my business has grown just by word of mouth. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. Well, it sounds like the way you go, Mariska, is, is retirement uh, in your, uh, <laughs> on your to-do list at some point. <laughs> The only thing that's really on my, do you see my eyes? I need yeah. a vacation. <laughs> that's what's on my to do list. Uh, <laughs> uh, next week is the last semester for uh, purchase, for teaching. Mm -hmm. And then December, my slate is pretty clean. So I'm going to take at least a week to myself. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, mm -hmm. since this whole pandemic hit, since mm -hmm. the world, you know, in, um, in March of last year, mm -hmm. um, I haven't stopped because I realized that I cannot stop my work. So I figured mm -hmm. out how to continue teaching and keeping actors engaged the whole time. Like I made a very cheap scene study class, like, so it was affordable so that it wouldn't be a reason for them not to show up. And I've been teaching non stop. Mm -hmm. And so 
now I'm like, oh, now I feel it. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. it. And I knew mm -hmm. like once I got past Saturday that my body's mm -hmm. going to start telling me, you girl, you tired. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why it's like this yeah. plus you know i am i do take care of my mom and yeah. uh so you know we have to balance the energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. that's 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 always that's always very important for an artist you guys mm -hmm. hear me out you know um i'm very ambitious and mm -hmm. i have i'm looking at my vision board right now i, I keep it out i look at it and I'm like, okay, boom. I checked that off the other day. <laughs> like, you know, there's still so much I want to do, but you can't let your ambition override self-care. And Ooh. that's, that's, the, Amen. You, could, you could throw your hands up for that. Right? <laughs> Amen. That's, and that's very that's, repeating. Um, <laughs> that don't, let repeating. Your, your, don't let your high ambition overtake your self-care. And yeah. I say that to myself because it's a lesson for myself. Like mm -hmm. I tend to say yes to a lot and I spread myself very thin. And, but sometimes I come to the realization, Mariska, you are one person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you want to do, but you, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, you got to have some downtime so that you could do it at the level of excellence that you're this one expected from you and that you expect for yourself and that you want to put in the world. So actors, artists, you know, find that balance to do your, your assignment, what you've been put on this earth to do, then find the balance to replenish that gift. Yes. Yes. Mariska, yes. The answer mm -hmm. is yes. Because, you know, um, I think that that's not spoken on enough. Uh, because I don't know if it's because we're in a capitalistic society and it's all about, oh, well, we got to continue to make the ends meet and all this stuff. And if it means spread yourself so thin, so be it, just as long as you bring in that dollar. But that's short lived. Because if you if you're not showing up whole, and I love what you said about perfection, that's that's not even real for me. Yeah, operating in excellence is real. You know, as that the best part. of your ability, right? The best based on what you have uh, accessible to you, and then you execute it the best way you possibly can. Mm -hmm. But even in that, you have to be, you know, in great health, meaning mind, body, and spirit. You know, and if that's, if something is out of whack, <laughs> it's going to come out yeah, in what yeah. you're doing or you have to shut it down, yeah. you know? So what are some of the things that, you know, uh, people like yourself can do to start enacting that self care? I think, I think something should be done every single day yeah. uh, as it relates to self care. Uh, certainly when you are in the throes of a project that is just so demanding. Yeah. Uh, one thing I make sure to do is uh, my little praise, praise and worship in the morning. Like I love, Excellent. my love CC Winan. <laughs> I love Very Sarah good. Jakes Roberts. Oh, um, I love yeah. Yolanda Adams, you know, mm -hmm. And um, I, I listen to that. And that's when I like get in my body, get in your instrument and stretch and roll your neck around and swivel your hips a little bit. <laughs> you know, and then I like to write in the morning mm -hmm. journal. I call them morning pages just to get anything that may become a creative block out of my spirit. I just let it, I just do a paper purge. <laughs> mm. Wow, and get it out sick. just get it out mm -hmm. and um you know i i want to do i i just got a puppy and now oh. I, yeah I, I could finally take him out because he's finished with all his shots so i just started being able to walk him around the lake and stuff like that it's gonna be cold soon but i'm gonna get in walking is great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. walking mm -hmm. is great um mm -hmm. I, I get a lot of great ideas just by walking near bodies of water. Water mm. is healing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also what I like to do when I get really stressed out, which is more often than I'd like to confess, 
<laughs> I listen to uh, chakra meditations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know about chakras? I heard about it. Yep, I heard chakras about it. Chakras are your energy centers, and mm -hmm. you have seven chakras that go mm -hmm. straight up the center of your of your instrument to the top of your head, mm -hmm. and um, the different tones mm -hmm. and sounds and colors connected to each chakra. So. They have one that can last about 20 minutes just to get yourself in line, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'll just, I, sometimes I just have to push away from the computer and just right. you know, lay flat on my back and put that on. It's like all on YouTube and stuff mm -hmm. and just breathe and listen to those tones just to get myself back on track, you know, mm -hmm. or just to get my energy back to, to one, as I call it. Mm -hmm. I got to get back to one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those are some of the things that I do. That is good. That is good. And I drink oh. water all day. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. That is good. Any advice on uh, some of the time management? So if you're juggling like three projects at a time, is it is it realistic to say, you know, well, within 24 hours, I can, you know, allocate three hours for that, two hours for this one hour for that is that realistic it is realistic but do i do it <laughs> not, <laughs> not really okay you know what's funny um after um after I, I i kept saying after the show i'm gonna take mm -hmm. like three days of nothing right mm -hmm. so i had yesterday yesterday was pretty good all i had to do was like return some things that we rented for the show i came home mm -hmm. and chilled out um, today I have to return something, uh, like we rented like a mic pack and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, I said, I'm just going to take three days. And then I open an email, pow, 24 scripts for the fourth season of the oval. So now I got to wow. read all of these scripts. So, cause I've been coaching, uh, one of the, uh, regulars, her name is Taja V Simpson. Uh -huh. Mm. And uh, she she plays Priscilla on the Oval. So she, I just mm. opened the email with all these scripts. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh what do I do? I got to I got to read. Yeah. I got I have to read and I have to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, so although I may say I'm take, oh, I'm shutting it down. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't I can't yeah. not do the work. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Again, time mm -hmm. management, whew, mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. real intense thing, especially when you have so many people depending on you. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't want to let them down. They're loyal to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and they trust me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have to do the work so that I can give mm -hmm. them my best. Um, so mm -hmm. time management, that's a real tough mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. And we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Talk with Tara, presented by African American Women in Cinema, right here on Rudy Radio. Hi, I'm Dan O'Shea, Executive Director for Maureen's Haven Homeless Outreach. It is our mission to support the homeless in our community. We provide an emergency winter shelter program, a day center, and support services to help the homeless in our community. With your help, we can continue to provide services so critically needed to the homeless in our community. Please visit www.mooringshaven.org or call us at 631-727-683. Welcome back to Talk with Tara. I'm Tara Renee from African American Women in Cinema. And today we're talking with the fabulous Mariska, who has just given us all kinds of great insight, jewels, that we could tangibly take and imply in our own lives as artists, as folks who are uh, doing many things that is so demanding in our lives. So Mariska, if there is a few words, if you can put in a few words, but it, I'm not gonna limit it to that. What are some of the things that you could share to those who have, who feel that they have a calling to either write, produce, act, because you covered the whole, a lot of the gamut here, right, right. but they are afraid because <clears throat> number one, 
you know, it's always been an interesting dynamic. I've been talking to uh, several artists who come from backgrounds where their family did not see art as a real career. Uh, they see becoming a lawyer, becoming a doctor, but they, they're not at peace. And I, I literally see them mentally toiling mm. behind this, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and because of that, now they're fighting with extra, like an extra negative energy that they have to power through, yeah. uh, which can be extremely problematic in many ways than one. And then they may not have um, a lot of resources uh you know to tell their story on film uh acting they may be super scared to even start going to auditions because they've been under such under uh under such hyper critical you know voices yeah um and then as it relates to theater you know they may be uh public shy if you will because again the environment that did not supply these levels of support that is so needed to really thrive, yeah, yeah. you know, in this vein, what would you say to someone like that? Well, you know, just like I was saying earlier, I have my vision board. Mm -hmm. These are my dreams, you know, and that's what you have to really believe in. Mm -hmm. No one can, no one should be able to, with their words, take your dreams away. Mm. That's powerful. And, uh, I say to my actors one day, one thing a day, mm. one thing a day, and it does not have to cost you anything with people making, I did, I was in a film as an actor with a woman who directed the whole film on her iPhone what? and it made it into many festivals. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, what I would say to filmmakers with a dream and not a lot mm -hmm. of financial resources, mm -hmm. get a good phone and, mm -hmm. you know, t telling a good story. It's not only about the dialogue that you write. And I say, mm -hmm. if there's a story you want to tell, write it. If there's a character you want to play, write that too. Um, and and find your frame what's the best frame you could look at <laughs> to, tell the, to tell the story like find mm -hmm. your frame and and know that this is moving the story forward or this frame has a great important piece of information that you want the world to know you know mm -hmm. it's all about your vision mm -hmm. it's all about your vision your dreams um again i i've run into a lot of artists where they say that, you know, they don't have the support of their family mm -hmm. mm. and it breaks their heart. It breaks mm -hmm. my heart, but mm -hmm. they won't stop. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. and you know, they get in the mind frame eventually, like I'll just have to prove them wrong. Mm. Success is the best. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say revenge, but mm -hmm. success is the best proof that your, your dreams are, aren't, you know, elusive mm -hmm. or, you know, just like, pipe dreams the yes dreams, dreams do come true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i've been a part of enough dreams coming true mm -hmm. to know that to be true so whichever mm -hmm. artistic endeavor you're on get a vision for it get a dream and hold fast to that wow that's awesome you know that what you believe is so powerful that's a very powerful element belief Yes. And, uh, you know, what you focus on and what you embrace, because it has the power to attract. I believe that. Mm -hmm. And um, when you start, you know, just as you made mention, cite the example of the young lady who did the film on her phone and now in all these film festivals. Yeah. And look how that opened up. Yeah. You know, yeah, that is so I important. think you would love this little film too it's called in black and white um oh. i play the mom of the lead and it's about an interracial couple young interracial couple mm -hmm. and uh it, it's just so cute maybe i could send you the link i think i would love to see it yeah. <laughs> i would love to see it the filmmaker she lives right in harlem too wow okay yeah. okay now and, and i know i guess i would definitely have to have her on the show but i'm curious as we are talking in that vein about stepping out 
outside of the film reaching the heights that it did being invited to or participating in many film festivals has she been able to move on to another project uh yeah she's 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 very active mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm, dana mm -hmm. verde is her name ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah uh -huh, she's mm -hmm. very active and very talented mm -hmm. and so this just proves the point that it's worth taking the risk and stepping out and do what you believe you should do because yeah. the world is awaiting the talent to see it. Yeah, and there's always stories to be told. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't think we should be robbed of not seeing it because of fear. And that's a real thing too. Yes, so, yes, yes, yeah. indeed. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, I know we talked about uh, the theater uh, production that you recently did. I know that's in the pipe. Uh, you talked about uh, another film project. Is there anything else, Mariska, that's coming down the pipe that you want to make us aware of? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, um, in terms of um, the amazing adventures of a woman in need, we'd like to, well, what I'd like for everyone to know is that you can see it on Vimeo On Demand starting the 20th. Oh, great. Yeah, in two days. We're going to leave it on Vimeo On Demand uh, for two weeks. Wonderful. just so people can view it whenever they like a lot of people mm -hmm. didn't have the opportunity to view it at that time on saturday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we would like to launch a spring run of it mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. and uh so we're in the works we're going to be pulling those pieces together wow and also uh i I have a project that I've written called I Am Charlie. It's about a Jamaican American private investigator. Mm. And, and uh, she, she, uh, she's real kick ass, you know, she's, real, <laughs> she's, she's my, she's a mixture between uh, Mahogany oh. James Bond, and Christy Love. Like this is all my vision. <laughs> That's a combo, right? <laughs> so, uh, I have a script. I have it as a screenplay and I have it as episodic. So I'm oh, trying wow. to, yeah, I'm tr I would love to do it episodic. My, my hope for that is really to do a feature film that will spin into episodes. Mm. But also I see how, you know, the streaming now, they love episodic. So it's yeah. available to be produced in both medium so mm. i'm just trying to find a fit for that okay investors okay. and mm -hmm. stuff like that that's so good that's so good who's your biggest inspiration besides my mom mm -hmm. <laughs> well <laughs> honestly i would have to say at this moment in time debbie allen uh Debbie yeah. Allen. Um, before the shutdown um, two years ago, she invited me to shadow her mm. on uh, Grey's Anatomy. Wow. So I was wow. with her there in L.A. for a month, just wow. watching her put together this whole thing. I mean, and that really opened my eyes. It was very sobering. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And just sitting at the production table, I was like, look at all of this money. <laughs> I was like, and what was, you know, because the way we do it here yeah. in the film, mm -hmm. I'd be wearing hat, 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 yeah, hat, yeah, take yeah, this hat off, yeah. put this hat on, take yeah, this hat off. And true. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> but when you, when, at that scale, a, yeah. a 15 year, 15 mm -hmm. um year run of a show mm -hmm. every um mm -hmm. department has their expertise and all mm -hmm. she has to do is tell them what she wants mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. make it happen mm -hmm. and i was like mm -hmm. and you know it was a full circle moment before me because mm -hmm. uh, like i said watching her in a different world is what inspired me to want to direct mm -hmm. in the first place and mm -hmm. then eight films later i get to be on set with her watching her at this level on this side of the camera you know i i look at her and i'm like wow you know mm. and you know just her winning the emmy mm -hmm. i'm like boy she just doesn't stop that's what i'm talking about <laughs> like that that's what i want to you know that, that's, that's what i'm striving towards that kind of um level 
That is so awesome. That's so mm-hmm. awesome. Well, how can the audience uh, follow and like you on social media? Can you share your handles? Yeah. Um, well, if you go to my website, www.marishka.com, sphillips.com at the top of the page you'll see all of my social media handles just as a hyperlink Mm -hmm. um on instagram it's marishka shanice or the other page is marishka phillips they won't let me combine them Uh, (laughs) on twitter at marishka phillip without the s because it's too long (laughs) i know and on Facebook, uh, you could reach me at uh, Marishka S. Phillips or Marishka Phillips Theatrical Preparatory. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So one, one word, one inspiring word that you can leave our audience today. And what is that one word? Warrior. Ooh. Wow. That hit home. That hit home that, with me. That keeps unfolding, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. Yep. And you have to be that way in order to execute the gifting that you have because it requires a fight. Yeah. And it starts with, I don't know, you know, I don't know what everyone's into, but it starts with prayer prayer warrior Mm -hmm. it starts for me it starts with waking up before i hit my feet hit the ground thanking god for another day to do Mm -hmm. what i love and to do what he's put me here to do and Mm -hmm. that i may honor glorify and magnify him Mm -hmm. in everything that i do Mm -hmm. um you know even like at the beginning of this broadcast she was like oh you're tired i was like yeah but i will not put this off mm-hmm. again it's not cool i mm-hmm. i didn't feel good about putting it off again mm-hmm. even though i feel you know i felt just a little underrested but i mm-hmm. you know i was like no i'm not i'm doing it lord mm-hmm. just, <laughs> i'm along with me holy spirit and give me what i need <laughs> and i i have no problem talking to my angels either so when I say when I say warrior, I mean it's mm-hmm. it, it encompasses everything: my work mm-hmm. ethic, my prayer life, mm-hmm. my belief system, mm-hmm. my vision for my life, mm-hmm. the love I have for what I do, the mm-hmm. people in my life, my actors, mm-hmm. my assignments. It's all mm-hmm. warrior like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I'm curious. Uh, the show came out a while ago. I can't remember what time frame it was. Uh, what was the name of that show? Xena, the Princess Warrior. Uh-huh. Have you ever? <laughs> did I watch it? Yeah, I did. I did. It, had its, it was in the. It was. It had its like really good run. Yeah, I watched it because I like watching powerful woman I- images. Whether it doesn't matter what culture, I think mm-hmm. that's. I think that's really really important mm-hmm. to see mm-hmm. women like that. That's why Charlie. My mm-hmm. character, Charlie, Charlene mm-hmm. is really her name, but we call her Charlie, mm-hmm. um, is important for me for a story for me to tell, because um, not only do we see her solve cases, we we um, rip the veil off of social issues. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful. That's yeah. powerful because we're in this season now. We're dealing with a lot, Marishka. Oh my you know, gosh. the racial the racial reckoning. Um, it's so much that's going on. Health matters. It's so much that's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. And I had a guest uh, prior who talked about mental health. And I'm glad to see that that's finally coming to the forefront front mm-hmm. and not still carrying on such that major stigma yeah, that no yeah. one want to talk about right you know? yeah no it's they i mean it's come to light that it's un- unhealthier to not talk about it yes 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 yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. and i believe it was the actress taraji taraji p henson who have yeah, a she's foundation shining. Mm-hmm. She, she's shining the light on mental mm-hmm. illness yeah mm-hmm and I think more more folks need to, uh, because this, when you begin to pursue your dreams, it is taxing on the mind. I don't care what anybody say. 
It's mm. very taxing on the mind, uh, taxing on the soul. And that care needs to be um, really uh, taken into account. Well, I don't know where the time <laughs> went, but they're telling me that we have to go. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, Mariska, for stopping by, you know. sharing your precious jewels and gems with us. And, and I know that uh, today folks are inspired. And thank you so much, audience, for listening to Talk with Tara. I'm Tara Renee from African American Woman in Cinema Organization. And you can visit us at www.aawic.org. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. Ta Talk with Tara is made possible by Rude Rangers Entertainment. Our creative director is Rudy J. Breedy. Please don't forget to like and share this episode with as many people as possible. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today. And we wish you continued peace, blessings, and prosperity. See you next episode.